EVE Online can come across as a fairly complex game. There is a wide plethora of different modules that can be fitted to your ship in order to achieve different effects, and some of these on paper can look fairly similar or confusing as to why you would fit one over the other. In this Catskull Academy lesson, I want to demystify two of the propulsion modules. We're going to be looking at micro warp drives and afterburners, comparing the two, seeing why you would fit a propulsion module in general, and why you might choose an afterburner over a micro warp drive, or vice versa, depending on the needs and goals of the ship that you're fitting. Hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll understand the pros and the cons of both of these modules, and know which one you should be fitting to the ship that you want to fly. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another Catskull Academy lesson for EVE Online. In this video I want to demystify micro warp drives and afterburners, two of the most common propulsion modules. Now these are probably the modules I am asked most about on this channel, and even if I'm not asked about them, when people share fits with me and ask my opinion, they are the most common modules that I see put in the wrong type of fit, and I think a lot of people have some misunderstandings about what they do and don't do. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. We're going to take a look at micro warp drives, talk about what they do, how they work, how they affect your ship. We'll look at a couple of different varieties so you know which ones you should be fitting to your vessel. We'll also do the same for afterburners, examine what they are, how they work, and why you might want to fit those instead of a micro warp drive, because there are very good reasons to use one over the other, as we'll see later. If you do have any questions at the end of this video, you can either drop a comment down below and ask. I will be responding to as many comments as I can, as usual, and I know a lot of my subscribers like to jump into the comment section to help out where they can as well. Or come join the Catskull Discord, which is linked in the description down below. Great way to meet a load of like-minded players who will happily answer any and all questions you have. Same for myself, I will jump in there, I will have conversations and answer anything that I can. Also a great way to make suggestions for future videos if you have a topic you think you'd like me to cover. While you're down there, hit like, it really helps the channel out, and if you do want to go the extra mile to help support content like this and help me keep making content like these, best way to do that is to head to my Patreon page, my PayPal tip jar, or my Redbubble merchandise store. Every dollar really helps keep this channel alive and is so greatly appreciated, so thank you to everyone who does donate or buy things from the merch store. Finally, if you do have, uh, if you have recently started EVE Online, head back down to that description. There is a referral link there. You log in with your EVE account and it'll give you 1 million free skill points, which is an excellent kickstart to your adventures in New Eden. I do get a minor kickback for that myself, but 1 million free skill points for you is a huge bonus and hopefully that will really help you out getting started. Anyway, all of that said and done then, let's jump right into asking the question, Micro Warp Drive versus Afterburner, which one is better for you? Let's start things off then by looking at the most straightforward of the propulsion modules, the Afterburner. Here on screen now I have a 1 Mega Newton Afterburner 2, and yes, that is what the MN stands for, Mega Newton. If you've studied physics, you'll know that a Newton is the unit of a measurement of force, and therefore it is 1 Mega Newton of force being applied to the ship. There is going to be some physics speak in this video, but I'll try to keep it as simple and as accessible as possible, and totally relevant to the topic at hand. So 1 Mega Newton Afterburner 2, it says here in the information, gives a boost to the maximum velocity of the ship when activated. The thrust that boosts the ship and the corresponding maximum velocity bonus are limited by the mass of the ship that uses this module. Note, usually fit on frigates and destroyers. That note applies to the one mega newton aspect. Afterburners can be fit on all different types of ships, but one mega newton afterburners tend to be fit to frigates and destroyers. 10 mega newton afterburners are more commonly used on cruisers and battle cruisers, with 100 mega newton afterburners commonly being fit to battleships. Now there are sometimes reasons that you would choose to oversize, like running a frigate with a 10 mega newton afterburner, or running a cruiser with a 100 mega newton afterburner, we will talk about that later. Now where it says the thrust that boosts the ship and the corresponding maximum velocity bonus are limited by the mass of the ship, this is why it's not always just a simple case of going, oh well I've got the fitting space, let's cram a 10 mega newton into a frigate, or a 100 mega newton into a cruiser, or I don't have the space, so let's put a 1 mega newton on a cruiser. 
Essentially, remember this module is giving out actual force and that force has to move the mass of the vessel that it is attached to. Now, one mega newton afterburner gives out sufficient force to move a frigate or destroyer quite comfortably. It does not give out enough force to reliably move a cruiser. So fitting a one mega newton afterburner to a cruiser is going to have very little effect. Same if you're trying to fit a 10 mega newton to a battleship. It's not going to have the force required to actually push that ship forward. But it does work the other way around as well, that if you want to put a 100 mega newton afterburner onto a cruiser, it is going to apply a lot of force, but the inertia of the ship is going to cause that to take a lot longer to reach that maximum speed. So you'll get a slower acceleration with an oversized afterburner, but a higher top speed. Anyway, let's not confuse things too much at this point. Let's move into the attributes and talk about how an afterburner module works. So it's worth noting here that essentially we have a, st a stats page here. Some of these are in green because they're affected by the skills that I have trained. We we'll, won't talk too much about the skills. You can have a look through the navigation section of the skill book to see how those skills may affect some of your different propulsion modules. But essentially for the concept of an afterburner, all we really care about is that it has a maximum velocity bonus and an activation cost. In this case, you can see the maximum velocity bonus of a 1 mega newton afterburner 2 is 162%. This means when activated, my maximum velocity increases by 162%. Meaning if, for example, I had a 100 meter per second ship and I put this on, it's now going to be a 262 meter per second ship with 162% of 100 being 162, right? Hopefully that makes sense. It's then added on to your flat movement. I will demonstrate that in just a moment. This also has an activation cost and an activation time or duration. Basically, when you activate an afterburner, it pumps all of that thrust and mass into your ship, therefore increasing the sort of the inertia value of that ship. So it does have a little bit of a, a, a give and take on your acceleration. Your acceleration rate is going to be slightly lower with the afterburner active, but it does massively increase increase your top speed and it will keep that up as long as the afterburner is cycling and it cycles every eight seconds. Obviously the longer that an afterburner cycles the better it's going to do. An eight second cycle time is better than a five second cycle time. Why is that? Because there is an activation cost attached as well. So right now this afterburner as you look at it on screen here has an activation cost of 7.92 gigajoules and an activation time of eight seconds. That means every eight seconds, it's taking 7.92 gigajoules out of my capacitor into that afterburner in return for that maximum velocity bonus. It's as simple as that. You activate it, you pay the cost, and for the next eight seconds, you get that speed boost. And as long as it's left active, you won't slow down. But if you do deactivate an afterburner for whatever reason, you will obviously lose that maximum velocity bonus and your ship will therefore slow down to its new maximum velocity. Now to showcase this in action, I do have a Wolf fit here. We have a uh, one mega newton afterburner two fitted currently. You can see with this offline, we are completely cap stable and we are currently moving at a speed of 417.6 meters per second. Now in the fitting screen here, if I turn that afterburner on, you'll see we now lose a little bit of our capacitor because it's powering that afterburner. But our top speed now is 1022.4 meters per second. This means the ship is now able to move significantly faster on account of that afterburner being active. And remember that the damage application equations used for things like missiles and turrets have speed as a factor. With missiles, your absolute velocity, in this case the 1022.4, is put into the calculation and put up against things like explosion velocity to see how much the missile actually damages you. By going faster, you reduce the amount of damage that missiles do when they hit you. Against turret-based weapons, having a higher speed means that you get better traversal velocity. You can move at angular velocity. Basically, you can move faster so you're harder to hit, right? Because you're a faster moving target. Fairly straightforward concept, and that's what an afterburner does. Afterburners are therefore used primarily for ships that want to have a constant propulsion module active. You kind of activate the afterburner and then pretty much leave it running for the rest of the duration. There are times when you may want to turn an afterburner off, like if you're trying to maintain a tight orbit. Remember the increase to the mass 
that the afterburner provides, that 5,000 kilograms, does mean that you turn slightly slower as well. So if you're trying to maintain a really tight orbit, you may have to turn your afterburner off in order to keep that range. Otherwise, you're gonna push yourself out a little bit further whilst trying to maintain an orbit around target. The other side of this, simply put, is that this is mainly used in things like brawling fits. If you want to maintain a constant range against someone with a module that you can just leave active, then an afterburner is probably more for you than a micro warp drive, as we'll discuss in a moment. Before we look at micro warp drives though, I do just want to spend a moment talking about the different types of afterburner that are fairly readily available early on in your career in EVE Online. We're not gonna look at faction and dead space. That's the kind of thing that after this video, I would encourage you to have a look at and see how those affect things. Now here you can see I have taken the one mega newton afterburner one, one mega newton afterburner two, one mega newton mono propellant enduring afterburner, and one mega newton YS8 compact afterburner. We're going to discuss what these do and why you might choose different ones. Now, first of all, the one mega newton afterburner here. You can see it has an activation cost of 20 gigajoules, a maximum velocity bonus, basic before your skills are applied to it, of 115%, a power grid usage of 10 megawatts, and a CPU usage of 15 teraflops. This essentially means that actually the one mega newton afterburner is fairly easy to fit. It's got quite low fitting requirements of 10 and 15 compared to some of the others going a little bit higher later, and it's got an okay maximum velocity bonus of 115%. It's not that great though compared to some of the others. If you can get all the way up to the skills required to use a one mega newton afterburner two, however, you'll see that the activation cost increases from 20 gigajoules to 22 gigajoules. This essentially means you're going to be using more capacitor on the afterburner two. Remember, just because it's a two doesn't necessarily mean it's just flat out better. They have upsides and downsides. The maximum velocity bonus though is a lot higher. 115 goes up to 135. And remember with the skills I've got, I've actually got this up to 165 percent with that afterburner too so those skills are worth training the power grid is slightly higher usage as well at 11 mega, uh, megawatts but we still have the same cpu usage of 15 teraflops therefore you can think of the afterburner 2 as being the better module in terms of speed but it has slightly higher requirements in terms of power grid and activation cost we then have the unusual mid-range ones, the monopropellant enduring and the YS8 compact. These don't require skills like the Afterburner 2 does. You should be able to fit these pretty much instantly. As long as you've got enough skills to use an Afterburner 1, you've got enough skills to use the other, and they have different reasons for using them. So the monopropellant enduring, you'll notice that it has a better maximum velocity bonus than the afterburner one, so it's already worth fitting. It does cost a little bit more, but it's essentially got a better maximum velocity bonus alongside the same power grid and CPU usage. So, so far, it's just flat out better than the afterburner one, and that increases when we look at the activation cost as well. As you might guess from monopropellant enduring, it has a lower activation cost, significantly lower in fact, 20 gigajoules down to 15 gigajoules gigajoules, 25% reduction in the amount of capacitor required in order to activate this. Therefore, if you want a better afterburner than an afterburner 1, but you don't quite have the skills for an afterburner 2, this gives you a better velocity bonus than the standard afterburner 1, but at a lower activation cost. That's already really useful. The second type is the YS8 compact afterburner. You'll notice here that again, we've got the same 125% maximum velocity bonus as the monopropellant enduring. So it's already better than the one mega newton afterburner one. It has the same activation cost as the one mega newton afterburner one, but it also has lower fitting requirements, nine megawatts of power grid and 13 teraflops of CPU usage. Essentially the compact afterburner is used when you don't quite have enough space to fit in something bigger or better and you'll notice it's still just flat out better than the afterburner one if you have the isk to buy a monopropellant enduring or a ys8 compact they are just better than the afterburner one but which one of those you choose to use either the monopropellant enduring or the compact is going to basically depend on your needs if you have limited power grid or cpu the compact can fit in quite nicely if you're worried about your capacitor however the enduring is going to fit better to those needs 
Now this of course is just looking at one mega newton afterburners, but these exist for 10 and 100 mega newton afterburners too, so you can see that that is going to follow those same patterns. You'll have a 10 mega newton afterburner 1, 10 mega newton afterburner 2 that will be better than the, uh, the 10 mega newton afterburner 1, but with higher activation power grid and CPU. You'll then have a 10 mega newton monopropellant enduring and a 10 mega newton YS8 compact that again will be better than the 10 mega newton afterburner 1, but with the advantages of either lower activation cost or lower fitting requirements. From there, of course, you can also look into things like faction or dead space gear. Open up your market tab and have a look at down the afterburner list. Go into ship, and, uh, ship equipment, down to propulsion modules and afterburners, and then have a look at the different types. Drag them into the compare tool and see what the difference between perhaps a Gisti or a Corellum might be, or different things like Federation Navy or Republic Fleet, and how those can affect the ship in different ways. Let's talk about micro warp drives next then. And for this, I've got a five mega Newton micro warp drive two currently showing its information page on screen. You'll note that compared to afterburners, which go up in units of one, 10 and 100, here they are five based. So five mega Newton, 50 mega Newton and 500 mega Newton micro warp drives. This does follow the same pattern as before, with 5 mega newton micro warp drives usually being fit to frigates and destroyers, with a 50 mega newton micro warp drive being fit usually to cruisers and battle cruisers, and the 500 mega newton usually being fit to battleships. Although again, there are reasons and scenarios where you might choose to oversize a micro warp drive for the ship that you're using. I do strongly recommend never undersizing though, because you simply will not be generating enough force to you uh, to actually move the mass of the ship that you're looking for. A 5 mega newton micro warp drive, even a micro warp drive 2, is not going to be sufficient to move the mass of a uh, battle cruiser or a cruiser for example. Now here it says on the propulsion module information page, a massive boost to speed for a very short time. The thrust that boosts the ship and the corresponding maximum velocity bonus are limited by the mass of the ship that uses this module. That's what we've just talked about, about not using a five mega Newton on a cruiser because the force that is generated by this micro warp drive is not gonna be sufficient to push a cruiser. Remember use a 50 mega Newton on cruisers, 500 mega Newton on battleships, typically. The sheer amount of energy needed to power this system means that it must be per must permanently reserve a fraction of the capacitor output just to maintain the integrity of its warp containment field, and when activated, it substantially increases the ship's electromagnetic footprint. The penalty, therefore, is that maximum capacitor is reduced. And this is a point that a lot of people miss about micro warp drives. Just having a micro warp drive fitted reduces your ship's maximum capacitor. You have less capacitor just for having this fitted, and we'll see this in just a moment. Here, third point down on the attributes page, capacitor capacity bonus minus 20%. You have 20% reduced capacitor just for having the micro warp drive fitted. Not active, just fit it. The advantage of this though is that we do get a whopping great big velocity bonus. Rather than the 115 or 135 percent of an afterburner, we're getting 510 percent increase with the micro warp drive here. That is a massive amount of velocity. And you might be thinking, hang on okay, so Benzie you said that the reason you might fit an afterburner is to reduce the incoming damage, right? Because you're going to be going so fast that missiles can't hit you, so fast that turrets can't track you. Well, yes, Yes and no. That is technically correct. However, micro warp drives have one other penalty to them. You'll notice the signature radius modifier about halfway down the list here of 500%. Now that actually works out mathematically worse than the 510% maximum velocity bonus. Meaning if someone is shooting at you with turrets or missiles, you will actually take more damage with the micro warp drive active than you would without it active. The increase to your speed is not sufficient to negate the negative effect to your signature radius modifier. The damage that they can deal, the damage application for signature radius is more aggressive than the damage application for velocity. Worth mentioning, because this means you will not use a micro warp drive if you are trying to speed tank. If you are trying to keep up a high speed and small ship size in order to avoid incoming damage, micro warp drive is not going to help you with that. The other big downside, again, other than that capacitor capacity reduction, 20% off your maximum capacitor really does hurt. The downside of this as well is the amount of activation cost that it uses. 
You'll notice that whereas we looked at the Afterburner earlier, having maybe six or seven gigajoules of activation cost, this is using a whopping 80. This thing will eat your capacitor quickly and therefore it is not designed to be left running for prolonged periods of time. You are meant to cycle a micro warp drive when you need it, meaning it is exceptionally good for closing distances or creating distances, but not so much for maintaining them. If you want a module that is going to be active constantly, you go with an afterburner. If you want to be able to quickly relocate from A to B, the micro warp drive is your friend. So let's showcase this in action here. Same ship that I was using before. We've got a five mega Newton cold gas enduring micro warp drive. And I'm gonna hear it have it offline as if it were unfitted to the ship. And you can see here that we have our capacitor here. It's nice and stable, 7.6 gigajoules per second, 100% stable, 429 and 140.62. But look what happens the second I fit the, uh, the micro warp drive. That goes all the way down to 321 gigajoules and that negatively affects the delta rate as well, meaning we are already significantly worse off just for having the micro warp drive fitted. Capacitor wise that is obviously there are genuine uses for using a micro warp drive Just be aware it is going to negatively affect your capacitor if we then activate it You'll see this uses a lot of capacitor to charge it and that is going to really destabilize us But speed wise if we go from zero here 417.6 meters per second standard Activate that 5 mega newton cold gas enduring micro warp drive and boom 2680 meters per second this thing goes with a micro warp drive fitted to it and activated that is the point of a micro warp drive get you from a to b as quickly as possible it should also be strongly noted that micro warp drives are not usable under every circumstance if an enemy is hitting you with a module referred to as a warp scrambler not only is this likely to stop you being able to warp away it also deactivates micro warp drives therefore if you are up close and personal to someone they hit you with a warp scrambler you are unable to activate your micro warp drive in order to get away. That is another advantage of the afterburner. When looking at the different types of micro warp drive, you'll notice that we still have the usual micro warp drive one, micro warp drive two, along with the compact and the enduring, but now we also have a restrained type, and we'll talk about this later on. Looking at the stats though here in the compare tool, a 5 mega newton micro warp drive one is of course our benchmark. This has an activation cost of 45 gigajoules, a lot more than we'd have for an afterburner for example, but that kind of forms the baseline for a micro warp drive going forward. It reduces your maximum capacity by 25%, it literally quarters your ship's capacitor just to have it fitted, but it does give a whopping 500% maximum velocity bonus. This comes at the downside of a 500% signature radius modifier, but that's kind of part and parcel of using a micro warp drive. Your basic fitting requirements are 15 megawatts of power grid and 25 teraflops of CPU. So those give us the baseline that we can compare against. Now, if you train up your micro warp drive skills to the point where you can fit the micro warp drive too, how does that compare? Or simply put, you're gonna have a five gigajoule more expensive activation cost. It is gonna be using more, act uh, more gigajoules per cycle, therefore you do have to account for that with your ship's capacitor. Fortunately, on the subject of capacitor, rather than taking off a full quarter of your ship's maximum capacitor capacity, this only takes off a fifth. That is a significant reduction and makes it a little bit easier to run other modules on the ship without going completely cap unstable. Remember as well, when you're fitting a ship and looking to see how stable you are, since you're only going to be cycling a micro warp drive, it's worth making sure that you simulate the ship with the micro warp drive both on and off so that you can see what your actual stability is like when you're not running the micro warp drive. This time around, the micro warp drive 2 does, does give a 510% maximum velocity bonus, which is quite a considerable bit of extra speed boost at the same signature radius modifier of 500%. It's still not good for signature tanking or speed tanking. Don't try it, but it is still a better option there than the Micro Warp Drive 1. This does come at slightly increased fitting costs rather than 15 megawatts, it's 17 megawatts of power grid, but the teraflops for the CPU are the same. 
We then have the same that we had before with the compact and enduring micro warp drives. Looking at the enduring first of all, it has pretty much the same bonuses as the 5 mega newton micro warp drive 1 in regards to capacitor capacity reduction, still taken off a quarter, still has the same power grid usage and still has the same CPU usage as the 5 mega newton micro warp drive 1. However, the maximum velocity bonus is now 505%, so it is better there and it has a reduced activation cost as we saw before down to 35 gigajoules meaning this is kinder on your capacitor better than the mic 5, mi 5 mega newton micro warp drive one in every way but also with a significant boost to the activation cost you're getting much friendlier activation cost now the yt8 compact micro warp drive does the same as the white as the compact afterburner does essentially again we have the same capacitor capacity we have the same fitting or uh, the same uh, activation cost as the five mega newton micro warp drive one but we do have reduced fitting costs instead of 15 megawatts of power grid it's now only 14 instead of 25 teraflops of cpu it's only 21 so it's a little bit easier to fit it the activation cost is the same as a micro warp drive one the capacitor capacity reduction is the same as a micro warp drive one but it does also have a five percent increase on the maximum velocity bonus from 500 percent up to 505 percent now interestingly enough here we have one additional type of micro warp drive there are five types of micro warp drive whereas there are only four types of afterburner this is the five mega newton quad lithium fluoride restrained micro warp drive essentially this when we look at the micro warp drive one again we've got that 505 percent maximum velocity bonus so it's better speed it has the same fitting requirements of 15 megawatts and 25 teraflops and um, we have the same activation cost of 45 gigajoules but this time around it is a signature radius mod fire reduction rather than 500% it's a 450% signature radius bloom still not great for speed tanking but if you're worried about getting shot by things heavily damaging that kind of thing the restrained micro warp drive may be your better option and remember there are other types as well of course these all apply to the 50 mega newton and the 500 mega newton uh, micro warp drives and there are also faction and dead space ones i'm not going to go through all of those that would be your homework if you want to call it that have a look at the different factions and dead space micro warp drives compared to their equivalents. So drag in a couple of the five mega newton uh, like Dread Guristus or whatever and see how those compare to the other micro warp drives. And there we have it. Everything, hopefully, that you need to know about afterburners and micro warp drives. You should now have a good understanding of which of these modules is best going to fit the needs of the ship that you're flying. But for a very quick understanding breakdown of this, essentially, if you are looking for getting from somewhere from A to B very quickly, for example, you're an explorer wanting to move between cans, or if you're running a long range kiting fit on a vessel, then a micro warp drive might better suit your needs. If, however, you're looking for prolonged bursts of speed that maintain throughout the entire combat site, for example, especially with brawling fits, then an afterburner may allow you to do that whilst maintaining cap stability. The afterburner is also going to help a lot better if signature tanking or speed tanking is the aim of the game that you're going after. If you've watched any of my videos about, for example, the Tengu or most of the frigates that I tend to fly in combat sites, then those are going to be using afterburners, whereas the micro warp drive is going to be for things like say long range destroyers in certain abyssal dead spaces that just want to clear a short distance in a very short length of time. Anyway, that hopefully answers everything. If you do have further questions, drop them in the comments down below. Come join the Catskull Discord and ask away. And Catskull as a corporation is always recruiting. We have a wormhole slant, but we do have a high sec base of operations designed to help newer players learn the game of EVE Online and understand how this game works, how to better fit their ship and how to pilot across New Eden. Anyway, all that said and done, thank you so much for watching right the way through to the end. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!